Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster, and today we're checking out my Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute Bass. Let's take a look. This is my Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute 4-string bass. Now I've never really been a fan of Gibson and Epiphone basses other than my Jack Cassidy. Most of their newer basses are neck-heavy one-trick ponies, and their older models are pretty rare, especially in good condition. In fact, the second bass I ever owned was an Epiphone EB0, and even though it looked really cool, that thing was awful. The tone was muddy and more muddy, and the neck had a mind of its own. Anytime the neck wasn't being held, it would knock something over. So I'm asking the question, was Gibson able to rework that formula and make a better short scale bass? Let's find out. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and hit that like button so my hand can turn back to normal. Thanks. So right off the bat, the first thing I notice, look at that. This bass is perfectly balanced. No fishing wire, no special effects. This is what a balanced bass looks like. And for a short scale too, that's impressive. That's because the Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute features hip shot ultralight tuners. In regards to the rest of the construction, this thing is basically a solid slab of mahogany. It has that classic transparent red finish that Gibson is known for, and features a gorgeous black pickguard. Now just like the majority of Gibson and Epiphone basses that I've owned at some point, this one featured the notoriously bad three-point bridge. However, I replaced this one with a hip shot, and it's great. I highly recommend replacing your three-point bridge with one of the hip shots, regardless of if the bass is hollow body or solid body. For electronics, this bass features Gibson's new bass bucker. Now normally I'd expect just a muddy mess out of this thing, but this pickup sounds really nice. Controls are a passive volume tone, and the volume knob is push-pull for series parallel. Let's check it out. This thing's a hoot. The neck profile still feels nice and substantial, which is rare for short scale basses. Usually they thin out the necks quite a bit. The tone knob on this is also very good. You can dial it back really nicely and get some great old school tones. Now I bet you're wondering, how does she slap? I'd say she slaps pretty good. Now in regards to string choice, you can go either way with one of these basses. I have it strung up with some short scale chromes, but this would be perfectly suited for round wounds as well. Now 
let's see what the Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute sounds like compared to our P bass. Man, I'd say the Gibson has quite a bit more old-school mojo compared to our P-Bass. Now let's talk about the value of the Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute. At a list price of $999, I'd say that these were pretty well priced to begin with, though not for everybody. However, earlier this year, these went on sale for around $500 or $600, and that is a really good price for one of these bases. These are USA made, have a full mahogany set neck construction, and offer some really nice tones. Also, the balance, again, is really nice. I don't have to worry. <laughs> I don't have to be hesitant about, oh, do I have to hold the neck? Is it gonna go somewhere? Nope. This thing is great. Now, is this space gonna be for everybody? No. This is definitely geared towards classic rockers some funk players, but probably can work in other situations as well. My only other gripe with this particular instrument isn't the fault of the instrument itself, but more so how these were stored. A lot of owners of this bass, including myself, had noticed early on that these had some pretty bad fret sprout. However, after a visit to Dom over at Third Floor Guitars, this thing is great. No more fret sprout, he filed them down, and this thing plays wonderfully. Now with a neck that has a scale length of 30.5 inches, you have to be wary of which strings you buy, as these won't really accept full scale strings unless you wind them up a lot. So be sure you buy short scale strings for a bass like this. So what am I going to rate the Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute Bass? Ugh. I'm going to go ahead and rate this bass four claws out of five. The top-notch hardware, great construction and sound, as well as the excellent balance of this bass make it a great value, especially at the discounted price of around five or six hundred dollars. Even at the full price of one thousand dollars, this thing isn't bad. Most important of all, this thing is a lot of fun to play. And I think that if you're looking for a fun short scale bass to play, you should definitely check this one out. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute Bass. Also be sure to check out this short message from my good friend Steve Goldshine, who's teaching an awesome composition masterclass. So go ahead and check it out. And as always, until we groove again. Hey everybody, my name's Steve Goldshine. Hope you enjoyed Lobster's video. I'm offering composition masterclasses through Composition Online. Students can bring a music project that you're working on and get detailed positive feedback on how to take it to the next level. No matter what style, production techniques, and tools you're using, come bring any project and I can help you with tips and tricks and detailed, personalized feedback to help you maximize the potential of your music. Check out more info below.